hand your passport to Egyptian officials for processing. As frustrating as it was, each time we loaded up our buses and our trucks with aid to head to the border and be told that we couldn't go, actually, each time we, we had to go through that experience, the people in Gaza also were waiting for us. And they came out, you know, I don't know if it was in hundreds or thousands, but they came out for a massive celebration. And each time they had to be told the government didn't let them cross. So we can all go home now. Um, and so when we got there on this day, we got there early so that we could have the celebration, spend the day um, with these people who, again, wanted the aid and wanted the trucks, but really wanted to celebrate with us. And the Egyptian government wouldn't afford these people even that. So they held us there all day. And finally, after midnight, we, um, we were able to cross. And um, as difficult as the situation had been up to that point, uh, as heartbreaking as it was, passing those Palestinians who weren't allowed in their own home. When we crossed the border into Gaza, I remember looking around the bus and thinking, I've never been with a crowd of happier people. Because everybody was elated. Um, and all of these Palestinians especially were going home. So we crossed in and um, went into the, the Gazan border station, and got our passports uh, processed and everything, and we basically had a protest in the station. We were all chanting in Arabic, and, um, and uh, once we crossed through, there's all this media who, who are waiting for us. There were these children drumming um, for us. Even though it was really late at night, there were still people who would come out to, to welcome us. And um, after kissing the ground and chanting and doing interviews and things like that, finally, um, we are uh, brought onto these buses to drive from Rafa up to Gaza City. And the man, the head of the bus, uh, my bus, gets on the microphone and he says, welcome to Gaza, the land of dignity and sacrifice. Um, so we went to Gaza City and waiting for us was this incredible dinner, um, chicken dinner. <laughs> and uh, it was really gracious um, and nice. But as we were eating, we had to remind ourselves that there's not much chicken in the Gaza Strip, you know? And that really sort of, um, it was symbolic of the entire 24 hours in Gaza. These people didn't have anything, but what they had, they gave to us. So they were so happy to see us there. Um, we ended up staying in these hotels, which must have been the nicest hotels in Gaza. And again, I was thinking, there's not much electricity in the Gaza Strip, but we're using a lot of it. <laughs> um, that, that's, that's what they're giving to us. Um, and so, uh, the next day, we woke up in our hotels, got in buses, and um, I thought that we were all going to go for a tour of Gaza City. Um, and two of the three buses did that, and my bus didn't follow those buses, and we sort of broke off and went to um, this unmarked, sort of undisclosed location building. Um, and they're like, hey, yalla, yalla, come on, come on into this building. Um, and uh, we didn't really know what was going on. Um, but they sat us down, and there were a bunch of media there. And um, we're waiting to see what's happening. And there are all these guys from Hamas, you know, the police with AK-47s and so on. And, um, and then Ismail Haniya walks in, the prime minister. <laughs> um, and he gets onto the stage to make a speech. And sitting next to him was a man named Kevin, who was one of the organizers from the, of, of, the, of the convoy, as well as four um, Jewish rabbis who were also part of the, the delegation. Um, these are four Orthodox rabbis who were very much in solidarity with, with the Palestinians. Um, I don't know if they ever make it to protests in, in Connecticut, but you'll see them at Palestine protests in New York City, and they come up to Boston as well. And everybody was so happy to see Jews against, against what was happening and in solidarity with the Palestinians. Um, and Ismail Haniya gave a very good speech where he said, our problem is not with Jewish people. Our problem is with the Israeli, the Israeli government. Um, it has to be said that Hania's speech was quite uh, mild compared to what the rabbi said. He went off on Israel and was calling for, for the complete dismantlement of the whole Zionist project from top to bottom um, in a, in a nonviolent way, of course. Um, so um, after that experience, uh, we did get to see a bunch of Gaza City. And um, I guess what I was, it was difficult to know what to expect, but I guess the only thing that, that the only image in my mind um, 
was that I thought that as soon as we crossed the border, it would be just like lunar landscape, you know, utter destruction. And that's, that's not exactly what it was like. One thing that um, I didn't expect was that Gaza is this incredibly beautiful city because it's, just, it's a Mediterranean city. And it should be like any other city in Spain or Greece or Italy, um, except for the fact that of, of what it's been through and what it's through now. And so you're on this incredible Mediterranean beach and seeing these waves roll in and children flying kites and people swimming and so on. And you're taking it in and you see a hotel that's a shell because it's been bombed. Um, and that was sort of the experience, driving through what was otherwise a normal city and then turning the corner and seeing that kind of destruction that, that I'm, I'm sure all of us have seen the photos of. And there are whole neighborhoods that really are a lunar landscape. Um, and we saw all kinds of destruction from houses to schools to mosques and even hospitals have been targeted. Um, one thing that was, two, two things were evident. One is that the Israelis targeted anything that was essential to the functioning of a society. The Ministry of Education was attacked. Obviously the schools um, were, were attacked, police stations were attacked, and so on. Um, but also agricultural fields were, were shelled and, and, and destroyed. We could still see the rotting corpses of, uh, of farm animals that had been shot months ago and, and, were, and were rotting since. Um, that was one thing. But the other thing was the utter contempt with which the Israelis must have come through when they, um, when they had their, their ground invasion. There's one apartment building in particular, I remember, that had um, these pictures of, of uh, Jerusalem on the outside of it that were sort of made with, made, uh, on, painted on tiles. Um, and in the center of the pictures was the, the, the Dome of the Rock, the, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is of incredible significance in, in the Islamic religion. And while it seemed like every building in Gaza City was sort of marked with bullet holes, and this, this building um, was no exception. In particular, the Al-Aqsa Mosque had been targeted by the, the gunners who were on the tanks that came through the neighborhood. So it was really um, utter contempt that, uh, that, that the Israelis um, came through with. One of the things that stuck with me the most were the words of this student at the Islamic University who, to me, sort of encapsulated the spirit of, of the Palestinians we encountered. She said, you know, we're a strong people and we're surviving, but we need your help. We can't stand alone. On our website, news of the tour of the unembedded American journalist Dar Jamel, who's been to Iraq on many occasions and will be talking in Connecticut about American soldiers who refuse to fight in Iraq or Afghanistan. Also, news of the appearance by two members of the Israeli group Shministim. These are brave Israelis who refuse to oppress or kill Palestinians. On our website, thestruggle.org. That's our program for today. See you next time. This is Stanley Heller, and this is The Struggle.